Welcome to another glorious edition of Ranking the Albums. And today, we have none other than the innovative, <laughs> unbelievable, <laughs> unbelievable Todd Rundgren. We're going to do yes. his solo category, his solo material here. This is it. And as you saw in that sneak peek there, we got none other than Mr. Todd Rundgren, know-it-all himself, Mr. Tom Jennings. Hey, I, I feel like I know more about Todd Rundgren than Todd Rundgren knows about Todd Rundgren. I'm just going to say it out there. And everybody out in Rundgren Nation, love you guys. <laughs> don't hate me. Don't hate me if I don't, if I don't agree with you. We, we can agree to disagree. But anyhow, let's do this. Hey, that, that's a Todd song. Let's do this. There you go. All right, so we're going to start off here. Uh, we're going to go through the albums uh, chronologically. You just talk about them, and then at the end, we're going to give you a old trusty, uh, on you know, regular ran handy dandy rankings, so you guys know how to go through here and uh, pick out what you feel are the uh, are the best Rundgren albums here. And uh, just to clarify, we're only doing twenty two of Todd Solar releases. There are a few that we just didn't count for various reasons. With a Twist, which is uh, remakes, Bossa Nova style. Uh, Rundins, which was a collaborative record uh, with somebody else. It's pretty It's pretty much all instrumental. There's some vocals on it. Reproductions, covers, remakes of stuff that Todd did. Uh, Todd Rundgren's Johnson. I mean, I've seen Todd Rundgren's Johnson performed live, but it's still just a record of covers. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all right so i got my list handy let's start doing it we just kick it off with the oh uh, and up against yep. it you didn't did you put up against it in your list because i no. don't have that one either no. okay because that's uh that's another one that was a bunch of uh, songs that was that were written for a uh, potential broadway show but i don't think it ever made it to broadway but we do have space for us on here we do we do so we will get into, we're going to go everything from Runt through Space Force, Yep. except for the what we mentioned here. Yep. All right, let's talk about Runt. Go right ahead, bring us into, uh, give us a rundown and an intro to Todd Rundgren's first album here. Ah, Runt. Well, uh, for you vinyl record collectors, you know that there is a, uh, there, there was a, the original pressing of it, there were some additional songs that want to appearing on at least one of them appeared on the following record run the bell to todd rundgren and uh this was on the ampex label but for all intents and purposes this is the beginning of what we call the the bearsville phase and if i remember correctly this was todd was originally hired by albert grossman who was uh the manager of bob dylan he was he was starting a record label you know and he wanted to kind of bring in some some younger blood and he wanted Todd to produce some of the older acts and, and give them a little bit more of a, you know, more up-to-date sound. And out of that agreement, he somehow was given, he considered this thing to be a vanity project. He never really expected it to go anywhere. And the, the big single from this is of course, we got to get you a woman, which is a song that Todd did not perform live until five or six years ago. It was the first time he ever performed it. And that was with a, an orchestra. And then it became a regular in, in the set list over the last few years. But yeah, he didn't perform that for a very long time. Um, a lot of times I think of these records and songs that I've seen him perform over the years. And I've seen Todd almost 200 times. I'm, I'm coming up on that. It'll probably happen next year. Um, but you know, like Broke Down and Busted, uh, you know, great, just kind of great bluesy song. He played that on on some tours for a little while. And uh, but overall, I, I, I like this album, the rhythm section, Hunt and Tony Sales. Uh, do you know the do you know the connection to David Bowie with those two, Joey? Can't say that I do. So in. they 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 were in a group called Tin Machine with David Bowie. So it was the three of them and Hunt and Tony Sales were uh, the, the children of Soupy Sales. And they were real young at the time that they recorded this, this album, Todd. I think they were 16, 17 years old. But uh, yeah, Todd's out right now celebrating David Bowie. So this was, you know, there was, there's always these connections in the music world or whatever. But I mean, overall, I, you know, I love this album. I, I listened to it. Uh, I mean, I just listened to it last week, as a matter of fact, because I, I went through the entire Bearsville catalog beginning to end just, just because. <laughs> and, uh, 
I don't know. I just I think this is a great start off to uh, to a great career. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I, this album, I, I, I really like the way it kicks off. You know, I, I uh, three solid songs, uh, like you mentioned, Broke Down and Busted, Believe in Me, We Gotta Get You a Woman. You know, it kicks off pretty good. Another song I really uh, like is on this one, Baby Let's Swing, The Last Thing You Said. The, you know, the kind of like the little medley he's got at the, at the end there. Um, you know, very solid album to, to kick things off. Quietly, you know. It, it wasn't uh, like like uh, his couple albums coming up after this where, you know, everything just blew up, you know, yeah. it, it, it made 185 on the charts, you know, quietly just just graced the charts for the album charts, which, uh, you know, not bad for your first time out, you know, all on your own. Higher than you and I have ever done, Joey. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, Runt. Uh, what do you? Th- why? Why? Um, did you? Have, why is the title called Runt? By the way, how do you know that I would know that? I mean, I do, but I'm just impressed <laughs> that you would ask me that. Uh, Runt. It, it's really just a play on the name Rund Grin. So Runt, because uh, I, I mean, I wondered that same thing too. It was just kind of a thing that he was called in high school, because he's not a run. I mean, he's a very tall guy. So there's some irony there as well, but. You know, some people, I guess they called him like Runt Green. So Runt became a bit of a nickname and he just sort of adopted it for the first couple of records. Yeah, why? Why? That's a kind of odd to, to like a, a good segue now into the second album. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. How how did that title come about? You know, I understand the Runt part, but why mm-hmm. why the ballad of Todd Rundgren? Well, I believe Runt was his original intent for Runt. And, you know, the real super hardcore Todd fans may correct me. I don't know. But as I remember, uh, he intended the, the, the group like he wanted Runt to be sort of a group name. So Todd Rundgren is a member. It's sort of like Utopia was a band, although that was eventually Todd Rundgren's Utopia and then just Utopia. I think Runt, his original intent was, you know, Runt was going to be like the, the name of his band. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe like a brand name like Prince, something like that. So there was a connectivity between the first two albums because the players were very similar on both records as well. All right. So the second album graced us a year later after the first yeah. one. And uh, actually almost a year to the date comes in uh, same month, June of 71. Uh, it touched it at, at number 214 on the charts. So not an auspicious uh, uh, but, um, you know, it, it didn't do as good as the first album, but, um, as far as quality of music, I think it matches up pretty good to the, I got these albums ranked almost side by side somewhat with one of them getting a little bit more, um, a little higher up, um, long flowing robe. Was that a tribute to Ric Flair or something? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's what I think of when I think of that. But obviously, you know, uh, this was way before the days of the Nature Boy. There, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I I just adore this record. Adore it. I, I never. Every time I hear it, it just sounds better. Uh, Boat on the Charles, uh, such a such an amazing song. Uh, just just love it. And uh, you know, Long Flowing Road, like you said, it just I don't know. Overall, it just has such a great. Uh, be nice to me is on this one as well, correct? Um, you're like, of course, you should know that, Tom. But yeah, which I thought was a really good single and, and could have done well. But this is really where, to me, Todd was in his deep into kind of his singer songwriter thing. And, I, and I've always felt like ballad is what really laid the groundwork for what something anything would become, you know, because he really was just writing some very catchy, very poppy songs. And uh, but yeah, Boat on the Charles. I mean, that's such a great song. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, the ballad. Wh- whaling, whaling, whaling Wall on, on here, too. Yep. That's, that's, I that's mean, just my, uh, wow. You know, a great song. That's my pick as the actual best song on the album for this one. Yeah. Uh, actually, you just mentioned it uh, a long, a long time, a long way to go. Another great standout track from this album. You know, and, and these albums, unfortunately, they never really got a lot of airplay back in the day, you know, except on maybe some album rock format stations. And so it wasn't like, yeah. 
was setting the world on fire as far as uh, singles were concerned. That no, was- and he was he was making money on producing, so there was no real pressure for him. But um, and these two records, Runt and Runt the Ballad, they were very very hard to find for many years. I mean, if you if you found a copy, it was usually used and pretty beat up, and it was re- really like prohibitively expensive. I mean, they were probably the last two records I was able to get. And, uh, you know, and then eventually they came out on CD, but that took a while as well. But they were supposed to release them as a package uh, called Rack Job. The artwork's out there somewhere. And they were going to re-release them to try to capitalize on his fame that he attained later once something, anything came out. But it it didn't, it never came to fruition for whatever reason. One of the questions I had uh, while we're starting to dig into his catalog here was I noticed he for all the amount of albums this guy's had out over the years, like you said, twenty two, not counting the, the ones that we didn't even consider. Uh, yet he had he hadn't really released a lot of singles. Uh, he released a pretty decent amount. I mean, I got a whole box set of just his singles. I'll, I'll pull it when when you're talking because I don't want to just have everyone looking at me when I'm grabbing the box set. But I'm, um, but another thing before you know, mention the singles. Another thing for Run the Ballad, but uh, if you notice in the credits, one of the one of the players is a guy named uh, Jerry Chef. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, I saw yeah. That. So I that's just... <laughs> uh, so that's Jason. That's Jason Chef of Chicago, who Todd played with on a Beatles tribute tour as well. Um, that's his dad, and he was a, he was a bass player for Elvis Presley and a and a pretty you know a, a session musician. So kind of a neat tie in to Jason and Jerry. I don't think Jerry raised Jason. I think he uh, was his biological father, and obviously they had a relationship. But I don't think I don't think they were super close. But it's still a pretty cool connection. Yeah, I remember talking to Jason about that. Uh, he had brought that up during an interview. It was pretty neat. So yeah, good good tie in right there. I was actually going to mention that. So you beat me to the punch. <laughs> So what's your right. take on oh, so, so 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 here's the quick quickly here's the yeah. box set I mean it's okay. it's it's eight it's eight records and these are just all the singles but it's it's top it's front and back uh, flip side map but yeah so I mean I've I've got them all here in case something comes up on another see like broke down and busted I I didn't know that was released on a single um but that was uh, it was the flip side to be nice to me long time long way to go parole I mean you know great song so. He did. Yeah. I don't think he, I don't think, I mean, he wasn't really a huge single artist, but, but that changes yeah. obviously when we get to something, anything, which is next. Yeah. All right. So here, that's, uh, that's the next one. We got something, anything, obviously this is the album that really <laughs> broke him here. Um, you know, so the song, uh, that really got, got it rolling there obviously was, I saw the light. That's the song that, mm-hmm. The first song that I ever heard from Todd, and I was a wee young kid back in those days. <laughs> <laughs> and that was, uh, I tell you, man, the first time I ever finally got to see Rundgren, it, it was probably about 10 years ago. But man, just hearing him sing that song, it really, uh, really uh, brought everything full circle. I mean, it was just great to actually see it performed live from somebody who heard that song so many times, and that, that's the song that that made me take notice of who Todd Rundgren was, you know, but for some reason I just never got a chance to see him until that canal side show in Buffalo. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is uh this is uh it's, it's, it's an incredible record, three sides of it. He does all the instruments. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Paul McCartney had done that on his first solo. Album, so, I mean, Todd wasn't really the first, but I mean, other artists have done it like Prince and things like that, but Todd was sort of, would would eventually be known for that and then side four was like this this super session uh, moogie Klingman had uh, organized and that's where they do the remake of hello it's me which if you've never heard the original version that's done by the nas i mean what a different arrangement if mean, you take it's it's it always fascinated me that they could take a song like hello it's me which the original version from the nas was actually actually charted uh, but it almost sounds like a dirge when Naz did it. Very, very low tempo and slow and kind of drags. But but taking it and giving it a little more of an up-tempo feel. But, you know, Todd's had a very conflicted relationship with it. He he didn't perform it for many years, and it's the first song that he wrote. So in some ways, he doesn't feel that it's representative of his talent. And I saw the light. He's, he's told the story many times. It's a song that he wrote in half an hour. 
from beginning to end. So it was a very easy song for him to write. He's performed that for years. Uh, another song on there of importance, Couldn't I Just Tell You, which is considered one of the forerunners of the power pop genre, which is a, a subgenre. And um, I don't know, man, there's a, there's some, some buttes on here. I think my favorite song on here is Torch Song. It's just a just a beautiful, beautiful song. And uh, and the night the carousel burnt down. But that, that's for more personal reasons, because I actually lived in Rochester, New York, and there was a, a pretty famous carousel that was at one of our amusement parks, the ones that I went to as a kid. And it, and the carousel actually burned down right when I was, wow. you know, probably in my early 20s. And, you know, the theme of the song is like, you know, the night the carousel burned down and then everybody kind of moves out of town and yet, as they get older. So it's a song about coming of age. And, and it was uh, it was very powerful on a personal level. And I've seen a lot of these songs perform live, but he's never I, I, I still you know, this year was the 50th anniversary of the release of of something, anything. And I own I have like four or five different copies of it, maybe more. Jeez. And uh, well, there was a there was a red and blue version that was really elusive for a long time that you know, I finally was able to get a, a repress of that a few years back. So I was really excited about that. They got another one coming out in on Black Friday. I'll probably buy that. But um, yeah, he, he never did this record beginning to end. He's he's performed uh, he's performed other ones, which we'll talk about because they're coming up in the in the rankings. But yeah, I, it, it's it's so. I mean, I've looked at this where there's been a lot of songs that I've never seen him perform live. I would say I've maybe seen half of them performed live, which is pretty decent, but there's a few that I would just love to see him play that it's just sad. that He'll never do the whole album beginning to end. Yeah. I mean, that would take up the whole concert probably for sure. Almost there. Oh yeah. 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 There's I mean, it, double it's, album a, it's, all. A, it's a complex album. I could see where, where it would be, a challenge, but I don't think it's any less challenging than Wizard of True Star. He did that, so true. Yeah, I mean, let me just touch base on a few of the tracks that uh, you, you, the ones you mentioned uh, pretty much were some of the ones that I had uh, have all highlighted here myself. Uh, Piss Aaron was an interesting song that I actually uh, that that one stuck out, and uh, S U S L U T. You know, that that's another one. Maybe that, a that's... slut, but she looks good to me. Baby. Yeah, that, that <laughs> song, unbelievable. I mean, it's like, uh, wow, what a way to close out the album. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, he's done that. He's done that one live a bunch of times. I've seen him perform that one. And Piss Aaron, he does. A, there's a there's a live recording out there where he intros it uh, and talks about each one of the characters. And it's all guys that his dad went to school with. Oh, and uh, the other, I'd say the other uh, takes two to tango is another one, and cold morning light. Those are two other ones that have really uh, stood out out of this out of this long collection of songs here. Um, but you know, I, I think you know, for me, you know, I like I like double albums, I like long albums, but I don't like it when there's a lot of filler on it. And in this one, in this case, this album, considering it was only his third third ever solo release you know he did a, a magnificent job on this album and, it, and it, you could play it all the way through and it pretty much holds holds it keeps your attention going right through it you know and uh, it's just amazing yeah. how he comes up with an album like this just his third time out and you know like he like you alluded to the fact that he did a lot of this just all by himself on what three uh three fourths of the album yeah, yeah. Side one, two, and three are all just him, and and yeah, I mean, I'd I'd say the first three records there's really not a ton of filler. I mean, this record, you know, you got you got some quirky stuff in it, you know, sounds at the studio, which is fun, but it but it, but it sort of you know it adds to the mystique of the record and kind of adds to the full listening experience as well. And they got the snippets of him playing, you know, in his high school band and stuff like that. But yeah, it's. I don't know, man. I love that side four and, and side four kind of set the stage for, you know, what, what comes later with nearly human. I mean, nearly human, he used the same approach to record that whole album that they used to, to record the side four of something, anything, which is some of the best stuff that he's ever put out. I mean, I love it. I, I, I like the stuff he does by himself. Um, but man, when he's got the right band, he's so good. <laughs> you know, I love it when he's, when he's playing with other players. 
and uh, we'll end uh, this here. He, um, this album, you know, finally, this is, was his big chart chart entry here. It went all the way to number 29. And, um, you know, I'm looking through here and uh, for 20, 20 plus albums, this is the only one of his albums that got has any kind of certification, surprisingly. Yeah, it, it, yeah it became it's gold, right? Not even platinum. Yeah, just a gold album. Yeah. But it's a gold album in my book, that's for sure. So I, I, I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, the second single was, uh, well, I Saw the Light was the first. Couldn't I just tell you it was the second? And then Hello, It's Me was the third. And uh, Hello, It's Me kind of screwed things up for him because he, Hello, It's Me had was sort of a, a happy accident of a hit. And he never really intended it to be a, a single. And, you know, he was working on A Wizard of True Star, which is, you know, we'll transition into that one. And Hello, It's Me was still on the chart. So you know how record labels are. They're like, hey, man, don't step on, you know, this record. We still got to, we still got to soak a little bit of more uh, money out of it. So don't be pushing out that Wizard of True Star too quickly. But yeah, when Wizard, I believe Wizard was already out by the time that um, Hello, It's Me was charting. Yeah. It's a good call. Yeah, so a wizard, a true star. A true uh, star. The follow-up to his biggest album, Something Anything, uh, came out a, a year later, March of 73. It made it number 86, and no certifications like we mentioned, but it definitely uh, left its mark. This is one of those albums that, you know, it, it, even like, somebody who might not even be a Todd Rundgren fan knows of this album. You know what I'm saying? This album definitely is one of those ones that that's, that's out there that people know about, uh, you know, fantastic title. Um, for me, this one, you know, same type of situation. It's a long album. It's got a lot of songs on it. And uh, I don't know, to me, it's it's not as strong as something, anything, but it definitely is is a decent follow up. You know, Never Never Land is one of the songs that I always uh, have to play when I bring this one out. Sometimes I don't know what to feel. That's another dandy. And of course, just one victory. Those are three the three songs that I chose on this album is the strong ones, the strongest. Yeah, I mean, just one victory. That was Utopia closer for so long, and Todd closer in a lot of shows too. It's just such, man. I never get sick of hearing that song. <laughs> <laughs> I just, oh, man. I'm just, just even sitting here thinking about that song. It just gives me chills. I mean, there's been so many great versions of it. Um, and and as a record, you know, I mean, this was a this was a a hard left turn for Todd. He he didn't want to be pigeonholed as the the next Carol King, as he said. So he wanted to do something that was very challenging to his audience. But I, I think in many ways, this is the beginning of Todd's cult status as an artist, because for a couple of reasons, one, because this record is very, um, you know, it's very creative. It's, it's kind of avant-garde, if you will. And it, and in the inserts, in the there, there's actually there was an insert with a band aid that there was a poem on it from Patty Smith. That's one of the things that's pretty cool. There's a message on the outside of the front cover which can be deciphered. You can look for that online, and it's pretty cool. But he had a little card in it, a little postcard in it. And in the postcard, he said, "Hey man, send me your name, and I'll include you on a poster on my next album." And so. This was uh, this was very similar to something like the Grateful Dead did because the Grateful Dead built their fan base by inserting a card in one of their records and saying, "Hey, let us know who you are, and we'll send you stuff in the mail to tell you where we're we're going to be in concert." So, this was sort of Todd's way of really beginning to bring that fan base in. And then on the next record, sure enough, there's a poster in it with a whole bunch of <laughs> names on the poster, and uh, somewhere buried in there, by the way, is Joe Satriani. So I, I haven't found his name yet, but it's that, but it's, and I, don't, I don't think Satriani is his real name. I think that's why I haven't found it, but, <laughs> uh, but yeah, wizard, I've seen wizard performed live in its entirety. I don't know, five, six times maybe. And, uh, but the first time was just like, you know, it was, uh, it was a pretty incredible experience. And yeah, I've got, uh, yeah, and there was a live version of this ca that came out. I've got a copy of that on my walls. So just to give you, I'll, I'll show I'll move the camera a little bit. You can sort of see on my wall, you know, the, the, the reverence I have, I've got the signed copy of the album. I got a poster for the, for the, the proper album. 
I've got the the live version framed, and then I got a, a poster of the concert, Wizard of True Star. So this is an album I, I'm very affectionate for. Is it my number one album? You'll have to wait and see. <laughs> <laughs> a little teaser there. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, fair enough. All right. So that uh, that brings us over to uh, Todd. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> 1974. Or, or, or a Wizard of True Star 2. I mean, it's just really just a continuation of the of what he was doing on Wizard of True Star in my mind. Just a just an ex, the same kind of sonic exploration and maybe even more challenging on some level. They get those crazy songs like Lord Chancellor's Nightmare Song, but he's starting to do like on Wizard, you know, you mentioned on the first record there was that medley and uh wizard of true star is really just this one almost like one seamless song you know and then he, he's doing a little bit of that on on todd as well but uh some great songs on here i mean i saw this record performed uh, in its entirety as well it was pretty cool love the song is that love i think that's just a gem i wish there was a full version of it instead of just kind of the little chunk that's on the album because i think that would have been a great single um don't you ever learn Oh man, I, I remember seeing him perform it just on piano and the version that's on Back to the Bars is just otherworldly. Love that. I mean, so many great songs on this record. The Last Ride, um, you know, Sons of 1984, which was recorded in one channel is recorded in New York. The other channel is recorded in San Francisco. Crazy stuff, man. Just, uh, I don't know. I could go on and on. Heavy Metal Kids. I mean, you know. Right, well, let me stop, give you what. Stop me! Yeah, I'm gonna do that right now. <laughs> okay, where's the Where's the cane? Give you the hook. <laughs> yeah, just shut him up. <laughs> All right. So yeah. So uh, last ride is definitely one of my uh, favorites on this one, and then I'll for a second I'll go with a dream goes on forever. Yeah, great songs. Well, they're two uh, two of the ones that I feel are the cream of the crop on this album for me. Uh, although a lot of the other songs though are, I don't know. Maybe maybe I just didn't give it as a solid. Uh, a solid of a listen as I, I usually uh, were able to, but didn't really, nothing else really stood out for me as strongly. I mean, it, they were, you know, decent songs, a lot of them, but nothing that really just gr- reached out and grabbed me in the way that a lot of his material does, unfortunately, which is kind of strange because, you know, usually right away, I, I can usually, a couple songs usually hit you right on the, right off the bat on his, on his albums, but for some reason this one didn't really, uh, you know, as you can see, a dream goes on forever. It took me to the fifth song to really, yeah. really get into it, um, you know, to really have one grab me, and then the last ride picks it up. It, it ends on a decent, you know, it, it it goes out from there for me, but for some reason this album just. Uh, out of the five that were released up to this point, to me, this one's the weakest of those five. Yeah, you know, well, you know, the, the other thing with this record is, I mean, if you I've, you said you you first started seeing Todd, I think, 10 years ago. Um, I mean, I've been seeing him for a long time. It's been 40 years now. And he's he's performed a lot of these songs live. And some of them are just better than the studio version. But you go back to the studio version and listen to it. It kind of brings you back to those live versions. You know, like, don't you ever learn to me with just Todd on a piano? I mean, just beautiful uh, not to say, and I love the album version, but I but I prefer that last ride. I mean, in concert, it's just a it's a showstopper. In fact, Todd's son had a conversation with a group of us once and said somebody asked him like, "What's your favorite song by your dad?" And he's like, "It's the last ride." So that's an important song as well, and it's stuff that he's continued to perform for for many years and and whatnot. But you know, I get it. I mean, it's everybody has their their taste, but this was a record. I don't know, you know, I, I'll, I, I can honestly say that I didn't really, really fall in love with this record until I saw it performed live from beginning to end. And he did a tour with this record and the Healing record. And I saw that show multiple times and, and it was just great. In fact, I think, it, I think the shows overall were better than the Wizard of Two Star, True Star shows, uh, which is saying a lot because, you know, yeah. obviously I love Wizard a lot, but yeah. All right, well, that brings us uh, to nine, the year 1975 as we step back into the time machine here. And um, that album is none other than Initia- Initiation. And, um, you know, that one uh, didn't chart as high. We're back to number 86, which is where A Wizard, A True Star landed. Um, still on the Bearsville label, obviously. Um, 
you know, this is follow up to Todd, you know, as he usually does. He's been doing at this point about an album a year solo wise. Plus Utopia, yeah, doing a lot of stuff. Well, yeah, it's not counting any of his producing and anything else that he's yeah, got going yeah. on at this point. So, uh, you know, so he's got a lot, always always doing something, that's for sure. That's one thing uh, you got to count. This guy's always doing something. Busy guy. Like, like you and I, Joey, we're always doing something, too. We're always doing album rankings. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what do you got for me for initiation here? Well, I think, you know, it's to me, uh, initiation and faithful, um, you know, we're talking about filler. OK, and I, I think side two of initiation is is kind of filler. It uh, if you have the if you've heard the Rundins album, I don't know if you took the time to listen to it. It sounds very similar to side two of initiation. And um, as I mentioned the other day, I listened to the Bearsville catalog beginning to end on a whim recently. And. I, I really haven't sat through side two on initiation very often and it's uh, it's okay. You know, I, I enjoy it. It's probably good music to listen to when you're reading a book or something like that. And I certainly appreciate the creative elements of it. And they used a snippet of it on, on a couple of tours to intro Todd, I think on the individualist, a true star tour and the recent book tour and all that stuff. But anyhow, uh, that being said, I mean, side one to me is brilliant. Uh, there's not a, a bad millisecond on side one. So many classic songs, all my favorites, you know, Fair Warning, Real Man, um, Eastern Intrigue, Initiation, Death of Rock and Roll, you know, just, just, oh, I mean, that side one, I, I, I just, it never gets old. I love it so much. Uh, and, and again, the only reason the album itself would get a downgrade is because I feel like side two was, eh. and then, you know, kind of the same thing when we get to Faithful, he does one side of covers and yeah, the covers are cool, but it's the original stuff that I really like. If you had taken side one of initiation and then slapped side two of faithful on it as one true Todd record, it might actually be my number one ranked record. So <laughs> that's how much I love the side one of initiation, but yeah, side two just kind of, kind of lost me a little bit. Yeah. Well, initiation, unfortunately kind of lost me all together. Uh, I only got one song that I really, uh, that really, for me at least, has stood out, and that's Eastern Intrigue. Um, you have no fair warning. Come on, Joey. That's uh, like, that's like in the Todd canon. That's like, no, I mean, huge, it's, it's an okay song. song. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, it's an okay song. It's not, it's not nothing, uh, bad or you, anything it's just you nothing. get you got you got todd fans throwing tomatoes at your at their computer <laughs> screens right now joey you got you got it man oh goodness go back and well, listen to that song i'll make up for it with my <laughs> other good choices here i hope but uh i'll have to wipe the tomatoes off my face here um, <laughs> but initiation to me i, I don't know and just fr from somebody who you know is uh I don't know for that. Just compared to the rest of his catalog, to me, I, I just uh, found that one a little harder to get into than each album. Uh, to this point, has has this has been even well, maybe not the weakest. I, I'm not I'm not sure, but uh, this one is definitely one though that um, yeah, you're right. I mean, I, I'll probably have to go back and give it a little bit more of a listen. But you know, the first couple times through, uh, you know. Uh, and th and this is one is is did, for as far as singles are concerned, mm -hmm. you know this is kind of where we where we get into it here. Now it doesn't um, looks like Real Man was the yep. main the main single on this one. Yeah, it's the only one they released. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's it's just kind of odd that you know how he had the big album, a couple big hits off of it, you know, two top twenty songs, and then you know it seemed like from there you know he kind of does a single here does a single there he doesn't really was that a record company decision or a todd decision that he didn't really try to push any singles really um, it's, it's a good question i don't know I, I i don't i just don't think that i don't think it matters to him i think he's uh he does what he does to please himself first and uh brings the fans along for a ride and I don't think singles were ever important to him. And I, I think that's, a, I think in some ways that, uh, I mean, let's be honest, it, it singles limit you as a band. I mean, Led Zeppelin didn't have a lot of singles. Nope. And, 
and you really didn't need to back then either. I mean, you if you if you were touring or whatever, you were touring to promote the album. I don't I don't even know that you really made that much money off the 45s. You probably yeah, everything was to, it, it it was about promoting the records. So, and I don't think, you know, the record label didn't become super intrusive until later in his con, con you know, when he came to the end of his contractual obligations, but um he did he did Todd did what he wanted to do. And so I don't know. I mean, real man. I mean, that song, I mean, he's, that's been its opener for most of his career. And honestly, that was really the first song that I fell in love with as a Todd fan. I mean, that was the one that, that reeled me in. I love that, that uh, the version off back to the bars is the one I prefer, but um, yeah, but I, you know, I get it, I guess. Yeah. A good analogy. You had mentioned that you said a lot of the live when you saw the songs live for the first time, a lot of these songs, they, they felt a a little bit better than the album versions. Well, some and of them are, some of them are a lot better. I mean, just yeah. one victory, uh, you know, the album version is, is good, but just one victory live. I mean, there's nothing like it. It's, it's an yeah. entirely different experience. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think that's, that's also the way it was with the kinks as well. The kinks are another band who like, you know, they were always called a sloppy live band earlier in their career, but once, once they got past the mid seventies, and they still yeah. were able. They were able to start touring the U.S. It, it seemed like they really cleaned up their live game. If you listen to a lot of live recordings, the songs sound so much better on the live versions than the studio. They're faster. Yeah, they just move along at a better pace, and they really end better. And, and I think that that's a good comparison. I think Rundgren is the same situation because, you know, I seen them for the first time ten years ago. Now I probably seen them a, a good dozen times. And man when you see the songs performed live, just like you said, you know, the hits, that's one thing, but when you start seeing some of these other songs performed live, it really does uh, do something and, and, it, and, and it makes it better, a better overall experience. You know, you, some bands, you know, they just worry about the recordings, other bands, they just uh, tend to make everything about the live show and that that's uh, that seems to be um, you know how he really grew uh, a lot of these songs. Like you said, many songs he didn't even perform till later on in his live career. Some of them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would say there's only two songs that I could say honestly. There's a huge drop off in terms of studio versus live, and that's uh, "Hello, It's Me." I don't think there's ever been a really definitive live version of "Hello, It's Me" that sounds uh, comparable to the to the quality of the studio version. Um, and uh, bang the drum. I mean, same thing. They, you just can't really quite capture bang the drum enthusiasm. There's a version of Todd playing it with Flo and Eddie on some TV special that was pretty good. But for the most part, you know, it, 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 those are songs that I think that live, the, 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 the casual fans will come and sing and enjoy hearing it live. But they're definitely not better live than on, on record but a song like real man you know those opening notes and everything mm -hmm. it's such an important part of the live experience but i mean that's the case with a ton of this stuff on faithful as well side two of faithful the you know we can roll into that one you yep. know like the love of the common man cliche you know those are songs that have been that have been kicking around live for many years and and the studio versions are good but the live versions are by far superior you know all right, so Faithful came out in 76. Uh, a year later, uh, follow-up to Initiation went, was higher on the charts at number 54. And this album is unique in what way? Well, side one is uh, songs from 1966, which is the year he graduated high school. So that's why he chose those particular songs. But he also used it as a vehicle to show that he could uh, – reproduced uh, some of the some of the more complex sounds in a studio setting so like you listen to good vibrations by the, the beach boys i mean that was a song that was way ahead of its time and they used a lot of really unique studio techniques but you listen to todd's version i mean if somebody didn't tell you it was the beach boys <laughs> you know, you'd think it was theirs it's that close i mean the other ones aren't quite as close but yeah that was the purpose so he was just kind of showing off his studio prowess but in some ways, this is really the first Utopia record, too, with the four piece, because the only player that's missing is uh, is Chasm Sultan. Right. You got John Siegler on bass. But other than that, it's Roger Powell, Willie Wilcox. So mm -hmm. and Utopia performed a, a lot of this stuff on side two and of, uh, of Faithful. But 
And, you know, come to think of it, like, I don't, I mean, I know we did, did a lot of covers on side one. I don't remember seeing many of those perform live over his career. So I think that side one was just, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, you know, I, I have mixed emotions about it. I mean, I feel in some ways it was kind of a throwaway thing, but eh, it is what it is. I wonder if the reason why um, he got into the uh, Ringo all-star band was because he picked rain as a cover. Remember what Ringo said when I asked him what his, favorite song was and he goes oh i don't know i don't really have a favorite for his uh solo career but he says he would always say hands down rain as his favorite song yeah well i you know i don't think ringo was all that aware of of the stuff that todd recorded but they they met at a jerry lewis telethon and uh in the late 70s i think and and utopia was there and ringo was there and they they kind of got together in an all-star jam and ringo had not played out a lot and that's where he first struck up a relationship with Todd. He had just had such a good time playing that uh, he, he tapped. He wanted Todd to be on the first all-star band tour, but Todd wasn't available. So yeah, that's how they met. I, I don't know what that anything. I mean, it's funny. He does the Utopia album to face the music, which is just these like, you know, Beatles songs kind of reworked in different lyrics and everything. And uh, I think somebody asked Todd's like, oh, does Rick even know that that uh, to face the music exists? He's like, yeah, we don't really talk about stuff like that. So <laughs> there you go. All right. So uh, for Faithful, for me, obviously, Rain for me does stand out. I really uh, <clears throat> thought he did a great job on that song, as well as, like you mentioned, um, The Happenings 10 Years Time Ago. Uh, that's another one. Um, Strawberry Fields Forever, you know, that, that's another one that stands out there. A Love of the Common Man on site two is the highlight for me. You know, um, yeah, I think it's a I think it's a, a vast improvement on his last couple albums, in my opinion, even though it, you know, it kind of kind of cheats a little with the covers, but he did a good job on them for sure. Yeah. All right. So that takes us to. We're moving now. Yeah, we got the Hermit of Mink Hollow. Yeah, Hermit of Mink Hollow. Mink Hollow Road is where he lived in uh, Woodstock, New York. So hence the name Hermit of Mink Hollow. And that's also the street where his recording studio was on. He had a recording studio that was, um, it was, I don't think it was attached to the house. I think it was, it was set away from, but that's where, that's where Meatloaf uh, recorded Bad Out of Hell. And then Meatloaf actually got married at a house on Mink Hollow Road and, so that's that's the name. I mean, when I went to Woodstock, that was one of the first places I had to go. It was like, oh, I got to go to Mankala Road and get a picture on the street sign because you know, that's what Goofy Todd fans do. But uh, yeah, and this is a, you know, this, I don't know for sure because this is where I'm going to test my own Todd knowledge. I might be correct though. I think this is the only album in his catalog where he truly does all the writing, all the performing. I, I, I don't think there's any, I think, I think there's records like, you know, ever popular church artist effect and wires, a lot of those other ones. Uh, they have some guest spots on them, maybe on a song or two, but, and, and there's a cover, you know, like uh, tin soldiers on ever Pro- popular torture artist effects. That's a cover of the small faces, if I remember correctly, or the faces, which one. Um, so I think this might be the only one that's just, it's all him, 100% him. Yeah, um, this, so this album obviously is uh, 1978. So it's the first time where he 77 he skipped. He didn't he didn't do anything as far as releasing an album at that point. But we see this one come to life in um, April of uh, 78, which was two years almost straight to the date of Faithful. Uh, it, it you know it, it actually uh, at this point, <laughs> unless we get another album coming out anytime soon number 36 on the chart so that's like his highest um second highest charting album out of the studio albums for his solo career you know obviously it's something anything being first at number 29 so this is the only uh looks like those are the only two albums to actually crack the top 40 oddly enough yeah, I mean, Can We Still Be Friends was a pretty decent hit. And it, it's appeared in a couple of movies. It's it's uh, definitely in Dumb and Dumber because Cameron Crowe, uh, who directed Dumb and Dumber, was, you know, used to write for Rolling Stone magazine and he he went on tour with Utopia. 
and so he knew Todd and he, he was a fan of Todd's music. So he put him in a, I put him in a couple of movies. I think something's in almost famous. Can we still be friends might actually be on the soundtrack for rock and roll high school for the Ramones too. But uh, you know, concert staple, I think this there's, I mean, there's a lot of songs on here that, that Todd has performed live over the years. I, I love this record. It's uh I, I was always surprised that this is one he decided never to perform live from beginning to end, but you know, I, I don't know. And uh, there's, there's like a, a controversy. If you look, if you get the vinyl on the back, they have the song order that's different than it was on the, the record itself. And the rumor was that the record company dictated to Todd that he had to put some of the more popular songs on side one. And then it says the easy side and then the difficult side at side two, which was the more, kind of creative songs um and i asked todd about it you know i said i saw him one day outside of a hotel and he's smoking a joint and i said i said i said todd i said i got one question for you he goes sure what is it i said the back of something anything or the back of herman and mick hollow why is the uh why is the song order different on the back than it is in the record and he goes i don't know i think they just printed the record sleeves before they press the record or something and then i was it <laughs> <laughs> great fantastic <laughs> it's a great it's a great story yeah yeah i was expecting something really amazing here <laughs> you come up i, I know like you know it's just funny you come up with you know, it's like todd's gonna be like you know, sure. you know well i just wanted to do the old i think yeah. record, you know because he answers me with the smoke in his lungs still which i thought was really funny <laughs> but all right, so yeah, so Herman and Mink Hollow, uh, like you mentioned, Can We Still Be Friends is obviously the big song that a lot of people yeah. uh, really enjoy. For me, uh, you know, there's, I think this album really closes pretty strongly. I mean, I, I love Bread. Bread is yep. my uh, my big song on the album. Bag Lady is another uh, <laughs> great yep. song. Uh, Lucky Guy, Fade Away. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of good ones on here. Uh, definitely... Um, you know, after something, anything, this one definitely uh, probably is my next highest rating one out of the uh, 70s area here. Surprisingly, it really, uh, you know, he really did a great job on this album. I really, uh, you know, and, and he, like you said, he did everything himself and, yeah. um, you know, recorded, he recorded on Mink Hollow Road there, right on the yep, <laughs> studio. Yep. And um, yeah. Just a really solid album. Uh, definitely one of the standouts of his career, in my opinion. Oh, for sure, man. Lucky guy. Oh my god, I love that song. Seen that, saw that perform live a few times. Fade away, you know, another one. Just a beautiful kind of wrap up to you know shows and and bread. You know, I just you know, it, it it's a combination. It has that sort of pop sensibility of runt ballad and something anything. So he really goes back to that that sort of the beginning, his roots of his of his pop balladry but the lyrics are so much more complex than they were on those first three albums, which were mostly, you know, songs about girls and coming of age and stuff like that. So, uh, but it, yeah, I mean, this, this to me is almost like his poppiest album too. Wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in, in spite of, again, in spite of some of those, you know, themes like bag lady, of course, and, and whatnot. Uh, but it's still, it still is very accessible determination, you know, is a, is a, is a great song on here as well that he's performed live over the years, but yeah, no, I dig this record. I've got, I've got like four copies of it, so I must like it somewhat. Cause <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, you know, like a red vinyl, a blue vinyl, you know, we got one where it has the name on the cover, one that doesn't, you know, it's just, I don't know. It's uh, but it's, I never understood why he never did this one. Like when he was doing album shows, I still can't believe that he never did this one. Cause it just, to me made so much sense. Back when he did wizard true star and I heard that he was going to go out on another album tour, I would have assumed that this would have been one of them, but instead he chose to do uh, Todd and healing instead. So yeah, it is what it is. All right. And that brings us to healing. Um, so obviously he wasn't not doing anything for the next uh, two years or three years this time, but <laughs> healing doesn't see the light of day here till January of 1981. And that's his next album. Uh, Crack number 48 on the charts, which is still one of his best ever chart entries here. Uh, another Bearsville record. We're still going along with Bearsville for another uh, little while here. Maybe one more album. Uh, Healing. Interesting album. Um, 
You know, he's got uh, three songs called Healing, part one, part two, and part three. <laughs> and, uh, you know, a couple of the, the ones that for me that really bring out the best on this album is Compassion and Shine. Those are the two that uh, really, that really yes. stand out <laughs> for me on this album. The other ones, you know, I think the album's pretty smooth, but those are the two songs that, you know, hit hit me right, right off the bat once they came on. Um, how much have you seen live of this album? You just, well, yeah, he did the whole thing. He did, he the, did whole the whole thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. He he used to play. He's played compassion for a long time. I mean, that was that was uh, pretty common in most sets. Um, and tiny demons, he did a lot too, which was the forty-five insert. It was time heals and tiny tiny demons. So he used to do a version of that as well in his solo performances. Uh, but yeah, he did this. Uh, I mean, I saw this, the Todd healing tour for well, five, six times at least, but um, yeah, right. You know, it's a crazy album. It, it's, it's interesting. So he had been, he was robbed and uh, like knife point or something b- between Herman to make hollow and um, healing. And I had a friend who always said, Oh, you know, healing was that kind of post traumatic record. And he was asked about that. He said that that wasn't the case, but you know, it makes for an interesting story. But side two is uh, the healing part one, part two, part three. The rhythm that you hear in that song is is a human heartbeat, which is pretty cool. And when you go back and listen to it again, it'll make a little more sense. Um, in the Todd fan world, this album is really revered. And when anybody's gets ill, you know, any of that kind of stuff, they they will, you know, say that this album has literally healing powers. I mean, I'm not going to get into that debate because there's that that takes a lot of faith, more than faithful. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Yeah. But uh, it's it, yeah. either way. There's a there's a there's a certain. I mean, this is an album that's that's very different from anything else that he put out in his entire career. Um, Shine, man. I mean, that, that's a great song. Just the whole build up and the way it it, it all comes together. And I'll be honest, the first time I heard this record, I really didn't like it. I bought it because I love the song Time Heals. And I thought the rest of the record was just too kind of slow for, you know, a teenager who was looking for, you know, ACDC and Sticks and Rush. Um, but, you know, as I got older, I really learned to appreciate the, just, the, just the work that went into this record. It's just, it's just a beautiful piece of art. It really is. All right, and, and I, I got a, I got a giant. Can you see my giant healing poster on the wall too? See, so you know it has a it has a special place in my music room as well. <laughs> well which you've you been have, in, by the way, Joey. But you probably have a, <laughs> a poster for everything, Todd Rundgren, somewhere in there, some whatever. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, because I got uh, I got a <laughs> I got a, I got a healing I got two healing posters on the wall over here, yeah, actually. So, yeah, how about a canvas for the ever popular tortured artist effect no 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 um <laughs> no i you know i like this record I, i've mixed emotions about it I, I think it's a really good record i just don't know that it's a great record uh obviously bang the drum is the big hit um drive man like i i think uh, you know that's lyrically that's one of my favorite songs Aside from just one victory, just the message behind it, just a and 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 it's one of those songs that I've seen live at times where it just really is such a showstopper. Uh, Tin Soldier's good, you know. Chant, I mean, it it it's I don't know, you know. I I like this record. It 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 seemed like a good kind of tying up the bow on the whole Bearsville thing because it's really the last one at Bearsville proper because acapella comes out on Warner. Right. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I. I love this. I mean, I love every Todd album. Come on, Joey. What are we just Todd? But <laughs> yeah, so this this album came out a year after Healing, a little little almost, you know, it was November of eighty two. Uh, came in at sixty six. Um, you know, again, remember at this time, you know, a lot of the things were changing with the eighties uh, here, with all the different stuff that was going on around eighty two. You know, you had a uh, Asia coming out and a bunch of other other bands and artists that were really hitting it big but uh it seemed like a lot it was a big shift in music obviously uh because of mtv are you still there oh there you are okay 
I'm still here. All right. Just wanted to make sure. And, uh, you know, for my take on this album, I think uh, a couple of the ones you mentioned, obviously, Banging the Drum. Just love that song. Um, I can never get sick of hearing that song, believe it or not. That's one of those ones. No matter how many times you hear it, I just never get sick of it. I can play it 100 times in a row. Uh, but Hideaway, the opener. Uh, yeah, that one great definitely, song, definitely great stood song. out. And then uh, Don't don't Hurt Yourself, another uh, gem on the album, which uh, yep. really stands out for me. Uh, those are the two uh, two uh, ones that you didn't mention that I feel definitely uh, drive. Yeah, hi- yeah Hideaway was Hideaway was the first single uh, on the record. I love, love, love that song. There was a great video that went with it. And uh, he didn't perform that live for a long, long time. And he did it with an orchestra. I mean, that was one that I really wished I'd seen live. And then he finally performed it. I think it was four or five years ago with an orchestra. And it was just great to see it perform live. But that's a really solid song. I love the acoustic and electric interplay and everything and just the rhythm of that and it's just a just a solid single you know uh and that was actually the lead-off single which i think is a much stronger song than bang the drum bang the drum was sort of a something that came as an almost, afterthought and almost like a novelty you know, hit in a way bang bang the drum yeah i don't know the story behind it i mean it just sort of you know todd said he he had a dream and he woke up and he wrote everything down and that's that's how the song came to him and it was sort of a throwaway thing for him but i don't know how it became a hit but it was one of those things <laughs> like hello it's me which was never you know we've talked about todd's intent when it comes to singles i think every record there was a general expectation that there has to be a single i mean that was sort of the 70s and 80s thing uh but i don't think that bang the drum was ever meant to be a single and somehow it just some DJ must have played it somewhere and it became a hit. And now, of course, it's the Green Bay Packers touchdown song. So, you know, as long as they're scoring touchdowns against somebody than, other than the Bills, you know, that's great. Yeah. So Bang the Drum came in at uh, 63 as a single. So, I mean. Yeah. See, that's not like anything, you know, as, as much as you hear that song, that's yeah. not like really it's not really a high charting song. No. Like I said, it, it, it's one of those songs that had a life later on because it became part of the cultural landscape for other reasons. And I yep. think it became like a, I think it became like a drive. If I remember correctly, it became a drive time song, which makes sense. You know, I don't want to work on, I want to bang on the drum all day. So I think there was a station that was playing it as a, as like the fr- end of the Friday workday song. And that's how it eventually became a hit. Probably Cleveland. I mean, that's Cleveland was always very supportive of Todd. Yep. All right. So that will bring us out of the Bearsville area here eras we're going to bring it over to acapella what do you got for me oh man something to fall back on uh just it should have been a big hit single i I don't know if he had recorded with traditional instruments i mean there's versions of it live with traditional instruments it's just such a great song it's so it's got such a hook to it i just love that song um and uh pretending to care i mean you know, there's there's a lot, a lot of great songs on this record. When it first came out, I was just floored. And this was part of a record label dispute because Todd actually recorded this record for Bearsville and then they refused to put it out. Uh, so then he was in a protracted legal battle with them. Uh, most of the fans at the time were, we, we got copies of it because there were bootlegs that were readily available and violin on cassette about a year before it actually had its traditional release. So then he he signed a three record deal with Warner on the condition that the first one that came out was acapella. And um, I don't know. I loved it. The tour, the tour had 11 background vocalists. It was just so cool to watch. And man, I don't know. I got some great memories of this record, but I don't know. Pretending to care uh, lyrically. I think that's just one of the most beautiful songs ever written in the history of mankind. It just, you know, rips your soul out. So, uh, and I did one cover on it, Mighty Love, you know, it's pretty cool, kind of a nod to his Philly roots. And yeah, I love, I love this record. (laughs) I really do. All right. Well, you know, for me, um, you know, this is one of those albums where I could take it or leave it, unfortunately. (laughs) I know you're going to kill me for saying that, but that's just uh, compared compared to the rest of his catalog. It's definitely uh, doesn't rank as high. So, you know, you know what, all those tomatoes that everybody cleaned off their screen, (laughs) 
now that now they're going to throw more okay and we're going to start throwing rotting vegetables at you we, this is acapella man come on wow. i don't know for me it just didn't i mean it's not a bad <laughs> album it's just not as good as I, I just feel it just isn't as good as you know as the rest of the catalog but um oh lord you know oh, it wasn't lord. one of those albums where you just want to like take it and like say okay use it as a coaster or something you know not nothing like that <laughs> It's just for me. It just it really uh, just, it didn't do anything for me, unfortunately, and uh, uh, it's sad because was, I wanted to really like it, but for some reason, it just never really uh, grew on me at all. It's not just sad; it's devastating, Joey. It's devastating. Well, I'll redeem but... myself here. You know, I mean, sometimes <laughs> there's albums, you know, like like you know, you 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 heard it a thousand times and you still just can't. It's just still can't get into it. You know what I mean? And that's, that's for yeah. me. This is one of those albums compared. To, you know he's got a great catalog here don't get me wrong so we'll yeah. we'll make up for it here <laughs> all right i hope <laughs> yeah I, I don't know all right so our next album will be nearly human yes and that comes in at number 102 on the charts uh the second release for warner brothers on his short stint here with them um so it got a little bit better four years between albums uh what do you got for us on Nearly Human? Well, as I alluded to before, uh, this is this was like a super session. So actually it was organized by his then girlfriend, Michelle Gray, who be, went on to become Michelle Rundgren. And Todd had moved to San Francisco. So there's a lot of San Francisco based musicians on it. Uh, you know, I don't know, man. It, 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 there's so, it's just such great musical chemistry. And, and I guess the way it worked is they'd, you know, Todd did the demos, he gave it out to the players, they went in the studio and they recorded everything live. There's a lot of energy there. It has, again, has that same feel of side four of something, anything. And this tour was like, whoo, man. First one he went out with, you know, was kind of almost, a, you know, I've heard people call it a, the the Vegas Todd. <laughs> the, the, the background singers and two keyboardists and, you know, the guitar, other guitarists, all that stuff. But very accessible uh single was uh want of a nail i think that did okay he performed it on david letterman and uh but my song the songs i love on this record uh waiting game can't stop running uh i mean those unloved children you know todd's guitar work on unloved children is pretty incredible uh can't stop running that's lyle workman doing the the lead guitar on it but just just a great song and i don't know this is uh this is a great record it really is. And a lot of people that, well, when he did the virtual tour, which was during COVID, he, uh, he called it the, the clearly human tour and he did a bunch of material from this and, and it was, uh, it was just spectacular. So, and Elliot Lewis, you know, who we both have interviewed and mm -hmm. met over the years. I mean, Elliot was in that band. I remember talking to him about this record. He's like, I wasn't really familiar with this one. And then when I went back to it, I realized what a great record it is. So yeah, Todd's vocal performance on it. Um, maybe his best of all of his records oh wow that's so, saying something uh, yeah i mean maybe aside from liars which we'll get to later but i mean he's his vocals out here are just uh, are just stellar all right so yeah nearly human uh for those uh if you get a chance to catch the next leg of the daryl hall and todd rundgren tour you will probably see the one of a nail because he's been doing it that whole this whole tour. So that's the only song you'll see from this album. But that's a I good thought thing. Didn't, no, he's doing Unloved Children, too, I think. Uh, I don't um, know. You know, maybe he might change um, it up for this leg. Who knows? You never yeah, know. Yeah, No, I think he's doing that one. But but getting back to my listings here. <laughs> that's good. Uh, fidelity. Feel it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Feel it. Oh, yeah. See, they're all great. Hawking. Yep. Written you know, about Stephen Hawking. So that's in case anybody didn't know. Two Little Hitlers. Elvis Costello cover. Yep. So there, there's a lot of good stuff on this album. This one definitely, uh, you know, I wasn't too familiar with it, you know, until, you know, later on. You know, sometimes you, you don't ex discover albums until later on, you know, after, well, after they've been recorded or released. But, uh, it's definitely left a good impression on me. I really, uh, really like this album. This is definitely one of the best Todd Rundgren albums in my my estimation here. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, the only one, the only song I don't like is Two Little Hitlers. I just I don't know. I just said on the song. I just thought it was weird. No, it just it just for me it just stood out, which was which was good, you know, because uh, you know you weren't happy with my acapella <laughs> thing there. So uh, <laughs> you know, but you know this album uh, definitely uh, for me this is a home run after after acapella. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> well, you know, it's it's uh, two little two little Hitlers. A little speculation here. So B.B. Buell, who was dating Todd and was the, the mother of Liv Tyler, uh, she also had a long term relationship with Elvis Costello. So I don't know if this was some kind of, you know, backhanded, you know, dig at B.B. Buell, but I've always wondered. And I got nothing against B.B. I, I just got to stay out of that one. <laughs> All right. So we're going to we're going to take a, a, a get our second wind here and go into Woo! 1991. Good segue, yeah. huh? Uh, landed at number 118 on the charts. And then one thing I remember about this album before I ever actually I ever got a chance to listen to it was it was always in the bargain bin, multiple copies of it at record theater. So <laughs> I don't know if that tells us anything or what, but that is, uh, I swear, I always seen this album in the bargain bin. Uh, so Second Wind, uh, 1991. Uh, for me, this album... You know, it, it's a it's a steady album. I don't think there's much that. The only song for me that kind of reaches out and grabs me out of the other ones that are just like middling, not filler, but a little bit above filler, but not quite is the second wind itself. The song that ends the yeah. album. So yeah, that, I agree with you. I mean, this was a this was uh, while well, they recorded it uh, over a series of live concerts in a studio setting. So they set up a studio setting at the Palace of Fine Arts in San Francisco. And I was just I was a poor young white man. I couldn't afford to go out to San Francisco to see these recorded live. But I did get to see this tour. And it's actually my favorite tour uh, of Todd's, at least in the top three, is the uh, Second Wind tour. The, the, the band, this is you know, the band, uh, it's the first time Jesse Gress plays with them. So it's kind of a... Mm important historical part but even though the, these this was recorded in, in a live setting in front of an audience i still think that almost anything i've heard on this record live is significantly better than uh the the recorded versions but i i don't know i learned to love this record a little bit more when i got a vinyl copy of it which is pretty elusive to find because it came out during the the cd era um the standout cuts for me like I don't know. Change Myself, I think, is a really good kind of typical Todd song. It's got those nice little pop hooks to it and um, kind of reminded me of that song, Maybe I Could Change, that was on a Utopia record, Oblivion. And then um, Kindness. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's great. If I Have to Be Alone, you know, it's, it's a pretty solid vocal performance. Yeah, I think this I think this album has some great moments, but for some reason as a whole, it's just not quite a great album, if that makes sense. All right. Speaking of uh, albums, uh, the next one. Let's get to 1993. For the let's no talk about the No World, World Order. Order kind of yeah. makes you run for the border. It's a new religion wrapped in a revolution. <laughs> yeah, it's got to make me run for the hills. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, this album has got to be. And I'm just going to put this out there. I don't know. I, I know it's Todd. I know it's a different type of uh, album for him, but uh, you know, it is in my estimation, this has got to be the worst album I've ever heard from him. Wow! And that's a statement, Dang. huh? Yeah. Yeah. I you just know, cannot... I, you know, it's funny. I get it because, like, when it when it first came out, I mean, my first reaction was, "What the f is this?" <laughs> <clears throat> um, I've learned to appreciate it more. It's really an electronic updated version of a wizard of true star. That's all it is. And, it, and if you listen to it in that context, I mean, you have to be, you have to be in a, in a, in the moment and <laughs> listen to it beginning to end. You can't just, you know, casually like, listen to this record to get it. I, I, I mean, it, it really, it really is a, a fantastic work of art. If you, if you listen to it in its full context. But oh, I thought you meant, you, you know, a... <laughs> well, but I mean, you know, Todd is not, let's be honest. Todd's not a great rapper. I mean, it's, uh, you know, but I, I, I get it. I get what he was trying to do. So. I was, when you said you got to, you got to, somebody's got to lock you in a room where the speakers are playing and you can't control the volume or anything. <laughs> just keep you in there and make you listen to it. 
until you go crazy, right? <laughs> well, you know, the songs, I mean, the songs Worldwide Epiphany. I mean, you, you played that a lot live. That was a, a huge concert highlight. Uh, Property is, is, a, is a, a, a single. There's a version of it called No World Order Light, L-I-T-E. Mm-hmm. And, it, and instead of having the whole, you know, album as one long soundscape, it, it chunks it up into like listenable singles. You may want to give that a shot. Cause it's a, it's a different experience, but I mean, there's some, there's some really good moments on here. Um, it's a lot, man. I mean, this is, this, this is a record that really does challenge you sonically. It's, it's busy. It's uh, bombastic. It's uh, it's crazy. It's, you know, again, like I, like we say, it seems like this is a recurring theme. There's really nothing like it in Todd's catalog. I mean, the individualist has some components that he drew from, on no world order but this record is really to me just the it's his 90s attempt at wizard of true star you know push the envelope challenge the listener and there you go okay it didn't work for you though did it joey no unfortunately (laughs) no yeah all right so we're going to go to the individualist 1995 and uh actually just to give you a heads up now maybe that has something to do with why I don't like it, but New World, No World Order did not chart in the U.S. You know, it did chart in Japan, though, but not in the U.S. And uh, The Individual is, is the same. The, the, these two albums just didn't chart. Uh, released on Halloween of 1995, uh, Individualist. Um, you know, I'm going to real quick mention the songs that uh, do it for me on this one. Uh, if Not Now When is one of my standouts on this one, as long as Beloved Infidel. Those are the two ones that uh, that definitely caught my attention right away. Great songs. Um, but other than that, you know, I do feel there's a lot of filler on here. Wow. Temporary Sanity? Come on, dude. That song is ridiculous. Like, to me, that is, that is brilliant. It is brilliant. Lyrically... Uh, the intensity, I mean, that's just, that's just a mind blowing song. Women, woman's world. <clears throat> very cool as well. Now the song espresso. I used to love that when my kids were little, they used to dance to that one in the living room, but a lot of people have a conflicted relationship on that one. Cause it's, you know, a little too kitschy for them, but I love this record. I really do. I think it's a, I think it's a great one. I got to see it uh, perform live and lots of cool stuff, but, and I am the individualist. <laughs> <laughs> temporary sanity though joey it's it's yeah such an incredible song gotcha okay so then obviously uh you know with a twist came out that's one we're not doing uh one long year would come after that that's the year 2000 so we're <clears> finally <throat> getting into the internet age here yep and uh one long year 2000 um Artemis Records didn't chart like uh, pretty much like the rest of his catalog for the rest of his career so far. Uh, the last album that charted was uh, Second Wind, oddly enough. <laughs> mm. um, he's, he's, he's looking for his third wind, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> so what do you got for uh, One Long Year? Well, the reason it's called One Long Year is because Todd had started a service called uh, Patronet, where you were given, you know, he would record songs and he would send them out to people. And it was, a, it was a, had this thing called TRTV. It was interactive. So a lot of these songs were recorded over a, a you know, long period of time in different sessions. So it's, it's a bit fragmented. It's, it's not, so in some ways, it's not an album proper in that respect. Uh, obviously Buffalo grass. I mean, mm-hmm. what a song, you know, somebody was telling me yesterday, they said, Oh, I'm sick of hearing Buffalo grass. <laughs> I'm never sick of hearing Buffalo grass. I'm sick of hearing hello. It's me. Or I saw the light before Buffalo grass, Buffalo grass is a great song. And, uh, but you know, the album is it's, it's, it's okay. I mean, the, the, when they do like, uh, they do a bossa Nova song on here. They got the, instrumental thing marrying the holy ghost which is doesn't really go anywhere no <laughs> um you're fast which is like you know it's okay kind of a throw away you're fast and i like it um 
but you know, I, yeah, I mean, where does the time go is a pretty good song, but yep. I hate, I hate my freaking ISP. I, re- I enjoy that song, even though it's dated. Cause we don't really have ISPs anymore. Although I guess we do, but, but we it talks do, about, but talks about dial up. Dial up so, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm it, yeah, whatever. Love it of the common man. Yeah, but that's the that's the bossa nova version. Yeah, you know, this is the love of the common man. It was okay. I mean, it stood stood out for me. Uh, You'll never, you'll never get me to love bossa nova, Joey. Never. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but I mean, just like you said, I hate my friggin' ISP. Good way to kick off the album, going into Buffalo Grass. You know, great one-two punch right there. Yep. Um. Yeah, so I mean, for me, this is one of the uh, bang the drum on a ukulele too. I mean, yeah, I said you know you got a couple of covers, kitschy things. It's just it doesn't it doesn't have the cohesiveness of a of a true album, right? Which right, and and that's probably what lowers the grade a little bit because had it had more cohesiveness, it probably would be even higher. But right. definitely better than um, no world order. Okay, all right, so let's uh, <laughs> let's move on from there. We're gonna go to liars yeah which uh came out in 2004 so we got four more years in between albums came out on the sanctuary label april of 2004 um liars is definitely uh another improvement on uh, some of these last couple albums that we talked about you know you got truth you got sweet uh, I'll mention one wondering. That's another good album, a good song on this album that I really enjoy. You know, the rest of the album's okay, but uh, those are the three that really st- stood out for me on this one. Uh, okay, come on, Joey. Just when they clean off the screen from the second set of vegetables and tomatoes, God said, "Have you listened to the lyrics?" Of God said, <laughs> it, 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 "It's just an incredible song." And uh, past, I mean, past may be the best ballad that Todd did in his entire career. In my opinion, it, it's such a beautiful song. I, the only song on here that I'm not a huge fan of is soul brother, which was this, the lead single. And I mean, I don't hate it. I'm just not really in love with it. So uh, this tour, by the way, was, was off the charts, but this was a great, great tour. I wish you had seen this one. It was a good combination of kind of new and old stuff. And there's actually a record. You can usually stream it on Spotify or Amazon Music called Liars Live, and you and you got to you got to throw it on. It, it's it's solid. Great band: Chasm Sultan, Jesse Gress, Prairie Prince, John Frenzik. So, but I love this record more than all those songs that you said. You know, <laughs> stood up. I mean, stood up's a great song. I don't know. It's it's a great song. It's a great record sonically. I think too. He it he just recorded it really well. You know, some of his records where it's just him, they they. they they aren't quite as good. Flaw? I mean, come on, man. And you got one fatal flaw, my baby. You got a fatal flaw, Joey. Well, I don't think they want to hear you. <laughs> I don't think they want to hear you sing. But yeah, All right, I'll let's stop. Go on. I'll stop. Let's go on to the next one here. We can... Four more years down the road. Man, he's really chugging them out every four years now. Uh, arena. Yeah. You know, yeah. you you hear the word arena, you're thinking, oh, is this a live album? But no, this is his next studio album. Mm-hmm. Um, came out in uh, 08. Um, Hi-Fi label, September of 08. Uh, yeah, this one uh, definitely uh, has, a, has a good chunk of some good material on here that I really get into here. Mercenary, Afraid, Mad. Those are the three songs that kick off the album. You know, unbelievable start. And then Courage, you know, it's, there's a bunch of songs from there. I mean, this is definitely, uh, you know, for an, uh, an album that I wasn't too familiar with, man, this one definitely, uh, to me, it, it reached out and grabbed me. It's definitely a uh, very solid album from Todd here. Yeah, I mean, this is this was des- by design. It was supposed to, he said he was listening to like, like a lot of Def Leppard before he recorded it because he wanted to capture that sort of arena rock song. And uh, Mountaintop, you know, pretty school, pretty cool. Strike, I think Strike is probably my favorite song on this record. Uh, Courage being a close second, but um, all you know, a lot of a lot of pre-programmed drums, bass. It's still pretty solid. I mean, I saw this this record performed in its entirety a year before it came out, and um, and then 
you know, multi, I think I saw this one 14 times or something ridiculous like that. My wife wow. still gives me grief about it. She goes, I don't understand how you can continue to see this show all the time. I'm like, oh, you know, and it's funny. I, I remember going to some of these concerts uh, over the, cause he toured this for like two and a half, three years and um, thinking, yeah, man, I've seen this thing. I'm sick of it. But every time, every time I loved it. So uh, I do love this record. Every time I listen to it, I listen to it beginning to end, just like he performed it live and, Man, I, I enjoyed it. It's a great experience. I wish he had put it out with the band, though. I wish he had done, you know, a live version of this and put that out as well. Because the band he had that performed this was pretty solid. They did. It was great. Okay. So Arena is thumbs up here. And we're going to skip over uh, 2011, where he actually came out with Two albums is uh, the good old aforementioned uh, Todd Rundgren's Johnson album and the reproduction album. And we're skipping over to 2013 for State. Mm -hmm. What do you got for me on State? Uh, very dark and brooding album. Um, you know, I, 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 I didn't know what to think the first time I listened to it. It's, uh, this is, a, again, a very challenging album to listen to. There's some some interesting moments on it. Party liquor is kind of a big song in the Todd fandom, if you will. Um, I got to see this perform live or this tour perform live where he did most of the songs, and it was you know pretty intense, very EDM driven, very very dark. So uh, now you know I, I I every now and then I go back and listen to this one, but I don't listen to it often. Okay. Well, I think it kicks off pretty good with imagination and serious. And then, you know, for me, then the rest of the album kind of just coasts along. Nothing, you know, over exuberant or anything. But, you know, uh, it, it's not, not nothing bad either, though. So, I mean, it's definitely a more one of the more stable albums from beginning to end right through. Um, you know, sometimes you get an album where, you know, good song, great song weak song and it alternates all through kind of flowing throwing off the flow of the album but in this case i think the album just flows along all at the same pace pretty much after that great start and and that's to me that's state yeah you know so which brings us to Global. the year yeah came out the same uh came out in 2015 here for global mm -hmm. yep um flesh and blood um uh, holy land soothe you know some good good starting points on this album um skies skyscraper everybody everybody's like you know the big clap your hands thing I mean, that's everybody. that's a good one. yeah yeah yeah, this tour was actually better than I would have thought, you know, for somebody on the outside and you go to see that, you know, somebody who I think this might have been the second time I've ever saw seen Todd. <laughs> yeah, very so, high energy, very high energy. Yeah, I mean, but that show was definitely uh, unique, but but it, yeah. it gave me, uh, you know, because the way they, they performed some of the some of the hits during that one was a little unique. Let's put it that way. Yeah, but uh, I mean, I, I actually enjoyed it, actually, that tour. Yeah, I, I like the tour. I mean, it's a, it's a, uh, I think it's a really solid album too. I mean, I, I song Skyscraper is really good. It's got Chasm Salt on background vocals. Uh, Soothe, you mentioned, just a really nice ballad. Uh, everybody, which is just a good, in fact, everybody's the only post 2000 song that he played on his last tour. He, he did that as an encore. Uh, and that's a great song to hear perform live. So I, 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 love, I like this album. I think it was a, I think it was a nice refreshing change from sort of the darkness of state. And it, it's, it's a little, it was a little more upbeat, a little more fun. Upbeat, yep. Definitely. Even though, even though really, you know, thematically, I mean, you're talking about, you know, the, the global warming, you know, things like that. And, uh, but he still, he does it in a way that's, that's interesting. I mean, lyrically, this is a very strong album as well. You know, skyscraper. I mean, that's about uh, capitalism and all that kind of stuff too. So there's a there's a lot more to this record than just than just catchy songs. All right, so that takes us over uh, to uh, 2017. We're gonna go to White Knight. White Knight. 
I, I dig this record. First one of the collaborations and the way that this one was done is that I think Todd, uh, Todd works a little closer. He, he gets most of the writing credits on these. There's a few songs that he doesn't sing, which is interesting, but um, my standouts on this one, let's do this. I really like that one. Um, Chance for us with Daryl Hall. I mean, it was nice to hear, hear him and Daryl sing together again. Daryl and Todd did some great stuff. Uh, they did uh, Someday We'll Know on, on a Hall & Oates album called Do It For Love. Their voices just blend really well together. And, uh, you know, the, the yeah, I mean, I like this record. I do. The tour was, I just thought, was just a blast. It was great. So much fun. Yep. Uh, I remember this one. Um. Yeah, I mean this this album. Um, come, I got your back. You know, those are the two that really st- stood out for me. And of course, if you saw the tour, you remember the old tinfoil hat with the video in the background yeah. and everything that stood out. Um. Yeah, I mean a lot of collaborations. I think that's the only downside. Like you said, there was a few songs that you know he had other people sing on here. But, um, you know, I mean, you know, at that point in his career, you know, definitely uh, it was good to see a, a good collaboration album, like you mentioned. Yeah, it's very listenable. I mean, you know, let's mm-hmm. do this as a, as a super. Uh, I mean, if it came out you know, years before, it'd be a, a good radio single, I think. Um, <clears throat> you know, very, it's a, there's some, there's some good chunks of of listenable material on here. I, I mean, I listened when I listen to this record, I listen to the whole thing. I enjoy it. I don't skip over anything. <laughs> All right. Perfect. All right. That's going to take us to the year 2022. Yeah, we're here, baby. We're live. We're still here. It's, it's a 2022. puzzle. Yeah. We finally get a new run grid album. Awesome. Yep. <clears throat> yep. And... Longest time between records. As a matter of fact, between uh, was White's Night and um, Space Force. Did you know that? You, of yeah. course, knew that because I wrote the review for your website. <laughs> yeah, and I guess some people were trying to call you out on that. Yeah, you, they were. You, you know, it's really funny. They're like, they're like, that's not the longest between records. I'm like, hey, listen, the information is out there. Prove me wrong. <laughs> Come on. And, you know, it's funny that's, you know, in this in this stage where it's all like, you know, that's not this, that. I'm like, it, it, it's numbers, dude. Like, like you can, when you make a statement like that, you have to do your homework. You know, I mean, I, if I said it's the longest between records, you, you don't think I looked it up, you know, I mean, I spent some time trying to figure that out. And, but what's funny about that is I think that as we get older, you know, time seems to go by a little quicker and it, and it doesn't seem like all that long from white night to, cause to me, like, you know, one long year to, to liars, that seemed like a really, really long time, but you know, I was younger. So you know, whatever, but this is, yeah, it was, they were, they were crapping all over me, weren't they, Joey? Well, we, I mean, we had a pandemic <laughs> in the middle of it too. How could they not realize how long it's been, especially since we didn't even get to see any tours for a while either because of this whole thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, well, I mean, this thing was, was announced about a year and a half ago too. So, I mean, they've been, everybody's been kind of waiting for it. I mean, you know, right, not too long after white Knight, he said, Oh, I'm going to do another album. And I think he said it was going to be called white Knight two. And then that never came to fruition. And then he said, Oh yeah, I'm going to do the second collaborations album. We're going to call it space force. You know, and that was a take on something that Trump had said somewhere along the line. So, yeah, whatever. But, um, yeah, so it, it and then it got delayed because they couldn't they couldn't they pressed it in five different colors of vinyl and I guess that you got all five yet? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> I love you, Todd, but I ain't <laughs> buying five different versions of Space Force. Something, anything? Yeah, you you could probably rope me in on that one. There's actually one version of A Wizard of True Star that I don't own. And I'm I'm oh I'll probably buy I'll probably buy it at some point. Yeah, there's a there's a two two record version of it that's supposed to be higher fidelity. And I but I already own seven copies of Wizard, and I'm wow. just like I'm like oh my god I can't buy another one. So yeah, right. but I will I will eventually we'll talk, uh, we'll... for Christmas out there, folks. Anybody watching? Uh, two two vinyl colored vinyl Wizard of Two Star. Uh, send it to me. Uh, Tom Jennings, Carol Oakfield, New York. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, so for this album, actually, uh, you know, this is this album is definitely a, a warm welcome here. You know, uh, 
artist in residence uh, stands out immensely someday. Um, STFU, another solid uh, song. Head in the ocean, puzzle, like you had mentioned. Just don't go down with the ship. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got yeah. for me on this album? What, what, what do you? Uh, what songs do you really uh, think are that where you hit hit the nail on the head on them? I uh, definitely love puzzle. I think that's uh, that's uh, a fun one. The uh, oh, what is it? Godiva Girl. A lot of people hate that one. I've really kind of kind of learned to like that one. Um, your Fandango. When you're when I first heard Your Fandango, I was like, "What on God's green earth is this nonsense?" And I've I've learned to really like that one. So I don't know. I don't. I don't really. There's no real. I don't really hate anything on it. I mean, STFU to me sounds like a song from Arena. I, I mean, it's it really similar style, similar approach. So um, I was exp- I kind of was disappointed. You know, there's two in between White Knight and uh, Space Force. The two collaborations that most disappointed me were the uh, Joe Walsh one on White Knight, and then the the Rick Nielsen one on this one. They just I don't know. They didn't quite live up to my expectations. Not that I hated either song, but. I don't know. I guess I just expected a little bit more when those two got together. Uh, the Steve Vai song on here is great. You know, it's, I was happy with it. I, I didn't know what to expect because about half of it had already been released and I wasn't really thrilled with anything that I had heard. But then when I heard it all in context, I was like, oh, I get it now. This is a really good record. And it's funny, a lot of other people have had a similar experience and either I have hypnotized them or that that's truly the case, you know, something like that. Yeah, I mean, this is this is definitely uh, stood out. It it was definitely uh, amazing. I didn't expect an album of this caliber this late yeah. in his career. Really, you know, I know it's a lot of collaborations on here, but every I, I think overall, definitely a very very solid release, which uh, you guys will see when you hear my final rankings here. Ooh, I bet you we're gonna have different spots here. Oh, All I right, know let's... we're gonna have different spots. <laughs> All right, well, let's get her done here. Because my my phone's down to twenty percent, folks. Oh, that's so not bad. We're, we're gonna we gotta crank this out, and uh, then oh. I still got to do Turntable Tuesday with Tom for all my Facebook friend, friends. Wow, you're behind times here. <clears throat> I know. I I set everything aside for you, Joey, my uh, friend. All right. <laughs> all right, buddy. Uh, so we got twenty two at rankings here. Yep. Um, what do you got for number twenty two? The worst. Rundgren album, but not necessarily the most hated or anything like that. One long year. Okay. What do you got? Obviously, I already told you what mine was. That was No World Order. Killing me, dude. Killing me, Smalls. Well, somebody's got to be last. <laughs> Jesus. All right. 21. So 21. State. Todd. Oh, you're breaking my heart. Number 20, Space Force. Wow. Are you kidding me? Just after you just gave that glowing rendition of it? Wow. Acapella. Ugh. Number 19, White Knight. Second Wind. 18, Arena. Initiation. 17, Second Wind. White Knight. 16, Ever Popular Tortured Artist Effect. All right, I got to put my shields up here. A wizard, a true star. <laughs> 15, faithful. The individualist. 14, initiation. One long year. Wow. That was generous. 13, global. Uh, healing. 12, no world order. Wow. Global. <laughs> now, we were close on global. Yep. 11, Runt. Liars. 10, Healing. Runt. 9, Hermit of Mink Hollow. State. Wow. <laughs> 8, Todd. Hermit of Mink Hollow. 7, The Individualist. Arena. 6, A Wizard, A True Star. 
Wow. I thought it was going to be higher than that. You, it's shocking. Mine is uh, faithful. Five, something, anything. Wow. Nearly human. Four, nearly human. Ah. I've got Runt, the Ballad of Todd Rundgren. I have that at number three, Runt, the Ballad of Todd Rundgren. And this is where the shocking comes into play. Number three for me, the new one, Space Force. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Let me give everybody a moment. Get your vegetables out. Go ahead. Come on. Throw it at them. Uh, number two, liars. Something, anything. What's your number one, Joey? The ever popular <laughs> tortured artist effect. Wow. You got any guesses what mine is? Uh, I don't remember. You re When you're rattling off 22 of them, uh... Mm can't remember what you said i thought for sure the way you uh teased us in the in the thing i thought it was gonna be a wizard a true star no nope, my number one is acapella oh my god <laughs> see so we got a lot this of is the most major deviation that you and i have ever had but we did agree on a good <laughs> chunk in, in, like near the yeah, near the yeah, middle yeah. you know yeah the middle and stuff so very cool though that was, that was fun it was a lot of fun yeah, 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 I like your concept on what we were thinking about doing. We'll have to save that for a band yeah, that doesn't maybe. have as many albums. <laughs> <laughs> maybe so. Yeah. yeah, but that was fun. I appreciate right. that. Yeah, definitely. It was definitely a good time. It would have been great to see uh, what other people think. But that's what you, the fans, will tell us. You give us your listings. Hey, man, I anticipate all kinds of angry comments. You know, we can take it. We can. We can. <laughs> I, I mean, Joey can. I can't. I don't like criticism. It's a good thing we're not doing it in a live room, though, these rankings. That's oh, sure. I know, man. I said you'd be like, you'd be, be like, you know, no world order. It's like, <laughs> I, mean, like I would have had to been behind some plexiglass or something. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah, I would have dumped like a Gatorade on you if we were in the same room and you said that stuff about acapella. That was that was heartbreaking. So. Yeah, well, you know, I'll have to give it more of a better. Uh, I'll I'll reevaluate it and see if it if it does any better for me. But yeah, uh, do it, know, do it. It just was one of those albums that I never really got a chance to listen to early on. You know, it's been out for a long time, but so many albums are out there right now. You know, to listen to, and that was one I just it eluded me. You know, you're gonna always yeah. have that, and sometimes you get surprised. When you something that does elude you and, and all of a sudden you go, wow, where the hell have I right. been for 20 years? Yeah. And, you know, it, like with me, I spent a lot of time listening to the Bearsville stuff recently. So that's kind of top of mind. And I mean, I've listened to Space Force uh, four or five times, but it was you know maybe a month, month ago when, you know, I got the review copy and all that stuff. So and a lot of times it just depends on where your headspace is. I mean, if we did this in a year, I'm sure we could come up with a different ranking, but. Yeah, oh, it yeah. is what it is. This is how and it is for today, at least. <laughs> absolutely. You got it. So, but we oh. can agree we love Todd's music. How's that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, buddy. Well, thank you for your time. And uh, thank you. Make sure you guys leave some comments here bad, good, ugly. Uh, well, we don't want ugly, but be yeah, nice. we don't want be ugly. nice. Be nice. Yeah, be nice. Be nice. Right. But just no, poli us. no politics. No politics. <laughs> But I do want I do want to see what these other people, you know, how they yeah. rank them and, you know, get some good ideas here on, you know, see what people agree with us on and see what they don't agree with us on, you know. Well, obviously, somebody's got to agree with us and not agree with us because you and I didn't agree at all, pretty much. So we'll see. <laughs> That'll be funny. All right. So and you're, 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 you're going to put the list in the comments as, right, as well, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll have everything uh, all good here. Yep. You got okay. it. All right, buddy. All right. <laughs>